Oi. Hey everyone on YouTube. Uh, my room is much cleaner. I've gotten rid of a lot of the junk. But that's not what today's video is about. Today's video is about me showing my cousin through a video how to replace the uh, thermal paste on his laptop. I built him a laptop. It's the same exact make and model as my current one. This way, if he ever ran into issues, I could show him on video, on YouTube, the process of dismantling whatever section he dismantled, uh, repairing, and reassembling of the system. This video is for him, uh, and anyone else that owns this model. This is a... let's see, where is my notes? Wrong one. Wrong one. Let's see. Probably just be easier to do this. Go to my scratch disc. Ah, this is on a Dell Latitude E fifty four twenty laptop. Um, I hope you enjoy today's video, and I do apologize for it being really long. Um, I would cut it into two parts. But all the video editing is done. Also, uh, just to warn you, I did not wear a shirt on this video, so... And remember, I am fat. And I did my best to edit those parts out. Uh, so, just to give you a fair warning on that, and I apologize for it. I recorded this video at the last minute. And I do thank you for watching. And I've been watching too many shows again. See you in a bit. Hey Manny, I thought I would do a video on taking your laptop apart. Now remember, ours have slight differences, like I have a extended battery for a longer battery life on mine. I also have two SSDs, which is my own custom modification. However, the basics are still the same on this laptop no matter what, mainly because I've used adapters that allow me to do what I did so I can maintain the, well, basic systems on this. Now. In order to get to your CPU cooler, you would take these four screws off. After that, you would slide it back like this, lightly. If you have trouble, you can like put your fingernail here or something and try to pull it back a little bit. But remember to remove these four screws before you do that. Afterwards, I put my thumb here to look played out. Now, this right here is your CPU cooler. Mine is shined up, mainly because I like the aesthetic of shiny copper. And, well, yeah. Now, in order to get this off, you have to remove the battery first. So, go ahead and hit both latches, and then take your battery out. Now, yours will most likely have four screws. I am missing two screws here, just because the amount of upkeep I do on this, and I am an idiot and did, wanna, did it one time when I was half asleep. But anyways, there are two deep screws here. One here, and one here. So, go ahead and take those out. Come on. You want out. And then, right here. Hmm. And I... What I do is when it's in a hole this shallow, is I turn it by hand, this way I don't lose the screw. And I put it over here with the other one. Now, to get this off, what I do is I put my finger right here, and I tug it a little bit until it clips off. Then, it comes right out. Now, what you need to do is loosen these like this. One, two, three, four. Uh, this way all these screws come out evenly, and then you would lift this out. Now, when you go to lift this out, pull it up like this, in a lever-like motion. Like that. This way, this part comes out without damaging it, because the way it cools is it'll gather all the heat here, and then it'll go down this heat pipe to here, and these spins. Well, when this curls, it'll blow air through here, cooling off your system. Uh, the reason I'm not doing it is I screwed up, did the finishing part first, and then 
Sorry about that. Anyways, as this spins, your fan will bl blow air through here, trying to cool it down. Remember yours, how thin it was? I don't even have it anymore because I got rid of it. While well, the heat sank, because there was no saving that computer. But it was pretty much a paper thin, literally, about yay wide, cooler on an i7 processor. So, that computer, in my opinion, was doomed for failure. But, as you can see, this is pretty thick. And it's not so long that it'll take forever to get to the uh, fins to cool down. But anyways, as I said, I messed up. I re first recorded putting it back together. And now you're about to see... Well, I just did the recording half where I take it apart. That's why I'm not pulling this off, is I've already reapplied my thermal paste and everything, so you're about to see the next half, and yada yada. Anyways, that's all there is to taking apart this laptop. Well, to fix the cooling issues if you have any. On a side note, it's got speakers here and here, so it's got stereo sound. And then on this part right here, I'm supposed to have a screw here, but since this is not actually a CD drive, but... Oh, come on. An adapter for a secondary SSD or hard drive. I have it in here. That way, if I need to pull it and swap out drives, I can. Just on a side note, if you had a regular hard drive in a bay like this, bolt it down because the vibrations can cause it to vibrate out. But yeah, that's all there is to it. Now I'm going to go back and record the section where... Uh, I booted up and checked the thermals. I hope you all enjoy this video so far. On a side note, if you look at this, these actually have like little latches uh, that pop into place when you put it in. Do not break those, please. They are, well, they help with the stability. Not stability, but, yeah, I guess you'd call it stability of it pulling down on its own with just the four screws. So, yeah. Okay, Manny, listen up closely. This is what, after you get everything taken apart, the inside of your laptop will look like. This chip right here is your CPU. This is what is most likely overheating whenever, uh... Well, it's probably why your laptop is shutting down. Simply put, there is a sensor diode in here. That will tell the laptop to shut down after a certain temperature to save the hardware. Now, as you can see, mine is nice and clean. I, I'm going to be recording this backwards and explaining how to take it apart. Well, I do it backwards. Ignore that part. This is the heat sink. A lot bigger than what you had. This one is also custom made and mostly pure copper. Uh, copper is the best conductor for heat. So this is why this is better. The one out of your old laptop was paper thin. This one is pretty thick compared to it. Uh, now, this gold plate and this shiny surface that is reflecting back have to be cleaned before you apply your thermal paste. Now, uh, give me a sec, set the camera down. What I use are Q-tips and rubbing alcohol. So, make sure it's greater than 90% uh, isopropyl alcohol. Now, the uh, reason the camera is flying like this is I've got it powered up through a wire right now because the batteries on it are charging. <clears throat> what I do, see if I can get this on camera, is I Oh, you probably not safe to do it there. Yeah, there ain't gonna work. Hmm. Oh, hell. Here. What I do is I put the tip right here, make sure it's not coming out yet. Put the tip of the Q-tip right here on the hole. Dip over and squeeze the bottle a little bit, not hard until you get a nice amount of the rum and alcohol on here. Afterwards, what I do is I will go over the core, sides and stuff, 
clean it up nice and neat. And then I will use a new Q-tip with dry side because you don't want any kind of oils or anything on this processor. And then I will go over it and I will dry up all the alcohol I just used. This way, when I put the new paste on, it won't be compromised by the rubbing alcohol. And also, since it's not 100% pure isopropyl alcohol, it does have a little bit of water that we left after, so it's best to clean it up. Now, you will do the same thing to the bottom of your heat sink. Uh, Q-tip with rubbing alcohol. Make sure you clean it up really good. As you can see, there's a little bit left. Clean the core up as well, not the core, but the plate right here on the copper as best as you can. Then, after you're done, dry it up with a Q-tip. Remember not to touch the tips with your hands. Normally I would wear nitrile gloves when I do this, so I don't worry, have to worry about it. But, oh yeah, I'm making this last minute. Now, right here is a thermal pad. Do not touch it, and make sure it stays there. If it falls off, it has to be on this plate, as clean as you can possibly get it. They do sell them online and they all come in varying different lengths and thicknesses and crap but uh what this covers is the GPU inside your laptop um it doesn't get that hot so it's why it uses thermal pad otherwise it would be using thermal paste just like the CPU. Now something else you need to do is this grill right here, you need to make sure it's nice and clean before you uh, put this back together because it's a pain to clean out otherwise. I'm going to stop recording here mainly because I've got to get up and get one of my toothbrushes which I use to clean out the grills on these kind of things. I will... Okay. Uh, probably best to do this off of a lap... off the laptop. Oh crap. One thing you need to do though is do your best to clean the fan up. If you notice the tip of this brush is heavily used. It is very soft. This way there will be no damage to the electronics. Um, let's see if I can keep this pointed. Crap. Oh my crap. Oh yeah. Okay, what I do is I go in here and I just lightly scrub around the fan blades, get all the dust off of them, best I can, then stick the toothbrush in here since we can't get the fan out, just slightly move the fan against the brush. And if I had compressed air, I would blow it out. <sighs> Never ever use your breath like I just did. This is one of those moments where you do as I say, not as I do. I am willing to take the chance on damaging my hardware just because I have spare parts of it. Well, spare parts everywhere in my room. So, and then what I do with this is just like this. And I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up, but there was some dust that's coming off. I'm going to, well crap, I'm going to see if I can find any of my spare thermal pads, just to replace this one, because that is old. Um, on a side note, like I said, never lose those, because if you lose that, 
your GP will no longer have a cooling system hooked up to it, and if that burns out, your board is dead. The main reason because it is soldered straight into the board. Because it is soldered, you would have to basically have equipment that is designed to take those off and replace them without causing any further damage. So always, always make sure you have your thermal pad on here. Now remember, we went over this and the core with rubbing alcohol, so they are nice and clean. Uh, and I'll be right back after I see if I can find my thermal So I found my spare thermal pads, and here they are. It's basically a giant thing that you have to cut your pads to size. I got it with one of my GPU cores. Anyways, I used to use Arctic Silver, but I now use Arctic MX-2. This has provided a at least 5 degrees Celsius temperature drop on all my hardware. Um, wish I had before and afters. Oh, Now, whenever we make sure your core is nice and clean. And in the very center, put about a pea size drop. Or some about that big. That one's about the size of green rice, which is what we need. Not a pea size. Depends on what you have. If it had a uh, giant heat spreader, like a. Uh, let's see if I got any laying around. Nope, not around here. But basically it would have a giant chunk of metal right here, which is what you want the piece size drop on. That way it can spread further and properly cover the uh, heat sink and the CPU. So that when they go together, they, well, cool better. Go ahead and get this back in here. Now when you go to put yours in, make sure you put this side in first like this, and then like that. This way, it will pretty much latch, act like a latch when it goes down. Go ahead and get our screwdriver. Make sure you put these in a crosswise pattern as you tighten them down a little bit at a time. I do about two rotations per screw and a cross pattern. This way it gets even pressure across as it's mounting. And this is why I have a rubber screwdriver. That one is not mounting. There we go. And I'm not sure if you can see in there, but my new thermal pad, Let's see if I can get better lighting, is properly in there. It is making full contact. So. This is all now back together. Make sure you always put your cap back on your thermal paste. I will post a link in the description on where I buy my thermal paste. Just so you know, they got one like triple the size of this. That's meant for shops. Don't ever buy that because it will eventually settle. All right. After we got all that back together, because we did not remove the fan or disconnect it. Mainly because we can't get to the connector in any way or get it out without fully dissembling the laptop. What we are going to do is start putting it back together. Now on yours you have a mesh grill right here. I took mine off for a better airflow. The issue with that is it will allow more dust through. As a result, you some have to take it apart more often to clean it. It's up to you if you want to remove it. If you do, 
just take like a razor blade and very carefully cut along the glue right here and here and then you can slide the razor under there lift it up and slowly pull it off this way you'll cause be less likely to cause damage to it which will mean you can reuse it if you decide to put it back on so uh, go ahead and put this back on see if I can get the camera back the way I had it oh come on camera work with me here thank you now you just put it in like that then now just so you know there's a little tab here that's got to be pushed back in and then tabs right here okay now right here is where you take a screw out to uh, remove this piece yours may have two one here and here they both got to come out there's also a screw here and here this little notch right here is not a part of this panel now these screws here and here are the long ones so get our screwdriver it is magnetic so we can pick the screws up quite easily and then Slowly screw it back in. I have done a lot of work on this laptop, and as a result, I have lost a lot of the screws. And I just lost another one. Dang it. Here's the other long one. It's now going in here. I did not put it on the tip of the screwdriver that time because this is a deep hole. That's what she said. And this panel is pretty much good to go. The reason I'm not using these two or putting anything in there is the panel that goes over this is, uh, well, it'll hold that side down. Also, when I put the battery in, this little lip right here is covered by the battery and that stops it from coming up. Okay, now, some notes. This right here is your RAM. Your computer has almost the max. These are 4 gigabyte modules. They yeah, gigabyte modules. Mine, I think, are the generics Hynix. I can't remember what I put in yours, but they work just fine. This is where your SSD mounts. I have a second SSD right here. However, yours has a full-fledged CD drive. Right here is where you could hook up a wireless WAN card basically like what a hotspot internet is right here I I'm not sure what this ports for but it's basically another mini PCIe slot and this is where your wireless card is um mostly these cards are used for like Bluetooth Wi-Fi cards those kind of things um there is a rumor that you can put an SSD here however I am not going to try it mainly because I don't want to waste money on something that may not work now the next step is to well as soon as I find the panel oh wait here it is here's this panel what you do is put it on like this it'll s see how it's got room right here and it's basically flush push it forward and it basically latches on after that you put your four screws in here and then put the battery in and then boot it up and see if it works and that's all there is to it hell YouTube well I already done that part I wanted to thank you all for watching today's video I enjoy making these videos as always I have a lot of stock on uh, videos, clips and stuff, reviews. Uh, the next video I plan on doing is showing the methods I use for thermal place replacement on different types of CPUs, whether they're bare core or have IHSs on them. Uh, I eventually plan on upgrading my system, system to Ryzen. Uh, my old i7 can still stand up to today's gaming and everything because of the video card I have in there. 
can still video edit videos and stuff, but I want to give this system to my mom. Uh, she has taken care of me. She is currently running one of my Core 2 quad systems, server systems, because her main computer, the main board died. That's one of the issues you have to uh, think about when you're buying older hardware. Is the hardware good or not? Will it last? I'm currently running this uh, server board from 2000 inside one of my servers, and it runs just fine. It's the quality that you got to look out for. So make sure you do your research and stuff on components before you buy them. But anyways, like I said, my next video will be about that. Uh, how I do my thermal paste applications and why I think it's the best. As well as how I clean the cores and stuff. Um, I also have a Twitter. You can follow me on that. I do my best to post at least two or three times a week onto there. I... Uh, do have a Facebook group that, but that's still here and there. That's still getting set up. And I also now have a Minecraft server. I eventually plan on using the Minecraft server to record a set of videos that can allow me to post a lot more than one video a week. Hopefully it will allow me to post more. Uh, I ask that you please subscribe, press like, share my videos, do whatever. I don't care if you criticize me. I just, I would love to have more subscribers to get my videos out there more. I am still learning. My channel might be a year old now, or about a year-ish. Uh, and I just want my channel to grow. If you have any suggestions on what you would like to see next, uh, after that, let me know. I will pick someone from the comments on what I would do next. I got plenty of hardware to show off. And... Uh, this is going on too long, so I'll see y'all later. I hope you have a good day, night, whatever time zone you're in. I hope you have a good time. And please, y'all, stay safe out there. Had a bad storm come through here, and, well, most people still don't have power. So, stay safe, y'all.